the solo stove bonfire fire pit. They make these in larger sizes and smaller sizes, but they all do the same thing. They're a smokeless fire pit, or so they say. So let's see what the hype's all about, and I'll show you how it works and let you make up your mind if it's worth 300 plus dollars. So this is the Bonfire 2.0. So they have obviously the stand that comes with it. It raises it off the ground, which allows you to put it on concrete slabs or any other location. I wouldn't recommend it on wood, but they say you can, and it won't leave a fire ring and it won't burn it. But anything getting super hot, I wouldn't put on wood. Uh, that's just my two cents. And the stand allows for more air airflow, which is great. So we'll see what the hype's all about. So this is a good thing to keep in mind. The ring that comes with it, you want to make sure not to have it facing down. It should be like a crown, so facing up. And that is, as they say, the last line of your defense for a smoky fire. So if you have this facing down, it'll defeat the purpose. You're trying to keep those open air vents from being clogged up. And also keeping it underneath these vents up top. Don't let the logs go above it or else you're going to get a lot more smoke. So inside the box, you have your styrofoam. Oh, styrofoam. Uh, yeah, apparently it's the cheapest, easiest to break styrofoam in the world. I'm gonna use two hands to get this out. So this particular kit has a solo stove shield and it goes around the top of the stove itself and that allows you to have a fire and not worry about any sparks or any issue with things flying onto your crotch and lighting fire to your pants like I've had in the past or burning holes through them or your chairs or whatever else. So this is like a spark arrester, which is nice. And then you have a tool, a wand that goes in to this little great section here to allow you to remove the lid to add more wood into your fire pit. Like that, you'll have your spark arrester cover that prevents sparks from flying all over your crotch. Inside here, we have what looks to be tools to remove the lid off the spark arrester, the deflection shield that goes on top. We'll set those to the side. Then we have your cover, solo stove, solo stove cover. This will cover the whole thing up, keep it protected and looking good in the outdoors, which is really cool that they provide that. I like that a lot. And it looks to be some sort of supportive stands in there as well to probably give it more rigidness to it. That way you probably can slip it over top easier, that's my guess. Ah, let's see here. Care and use on how to take care of it, but it's stainless steel, so it'll have coloring and weathering as everything does when it's superheated. But overall, this should last for a long, long time. As you can see, that tray at the bottom is the ash tray that catches your ash, so you can dump it out at the end of your burns. And it looks like it has a little grate in there as well to block out larger chunks. But it supposedly burns down wood next to nothing with very little ash left, so we will see. This is a second cover. Well, it looks to be two covers. This might be a carrying tote. I'm guessing it's probably for transitioning it from one area to another. So. You have a cover and then you have a carrying case. Then we have the stand here, which goes underneath the fire pit. As you can see in this illustration, the side, underneath that, more protective layering, which is kind of cool. They protect it so well. This looks to be the protective shield for the dust pan at the bottom of the stove. Then we have your ash tray with your dual wall system. So you have the outside layer, inside layer, and you have your vents that allow air to be pulled in the lower area of the stove up through this wall and through the top. And that allows for a smokeless fire as well. So you're getting a lot more oxygen to your fire pit from the bottom, which is here, up through the holes. So underneath here are those holes. So air is being pulled up through here and through the walls. And that should cause a massive flame. We will see. Your solo stove would usually sit like that on the ground. But with the stand, it'll elevate it off the ground. And not only does this allow for protection of heat to whatever you're putting it on, also more airflow, uh, more lift underneath your stove. And then when you're done and you're storing it, this fits right. Kind of noisy, isn't it? Well, metal drum, what do you expect? It fits right back inside for storage. Which is little solo stove logo and set it on top. I'm not sure if there's a level hot. Yeah, it's kind of loosely fits in there. It's not real snug, so keep that in mind. Kind of just, if you push hard enough, it comes off, but it does have a slight snug setting. So next is your dustpan. This goes directly inside. Just top of that you have your shield which prevents larger pieces of wood from going, getting in there and clogging it and that goes on top and that fits in the channel 
so that has a channel it fits in that way the wood burns air keeps flowing through it no matter what dust settles through that into the dust pan and then the vent ring stays open which is really cool and that thus gives you the magic of the smoke less or less smoke fire pit and then last but not least like that what that does allows the airflow to come up through that dual wall system and into the fire adding more oxygen and reducing your smoke so that is it in a nutshell ready to rock and roll and now we're gonna do a fire test and then last but not least i totally forgot the spark shield which is great so this lid just comes simply off and then these little knurled edges fit into those knurled edges all the way around and it keeps it on there pretty secure and then this just fits over top of the ring and this prevents any sparks from coming on you or most of them at least at least the big big ones and allows ventilation to still go and kick off a lot of heat and i'm guessing you probably could put a cooking tray up here little griddle or something and cook these are the tools that came in that one box i showed you earlier you can either just grab this and pull this whole thing off if you need to one at a time or use both and it allows you to pick it up and put it back down uh evenly but i think one would work just stick this in there pick it up so for this i'm using regular store-bought firewood just to keep it even consistency i just cut them into little kindling sticks put a little bit of paper on the bottom and light that up i'm gonna stack these up in little TP style. We'll get it going and then once it starts burning, throw in the bigger pieces of wood and see how it burns. So far, decent amount of smoke still. But it's also just burning paper in there right now. Fire's not going yet. But once that kindling starts, and this is larger pieces of kindling too, it's not as fine as it could be. So keep that in mind. But once these sticks start burning, that's when the true magic should happen. Yeah, I can already tell just by just the basic kindling getting going. There's so much more airflow. You don't have to worry about it getting smothered because air is being pulled from the bottom center of the stove. And it's getting real hot real fast. Love it. And the smoke went almost instantaneously away once the wood started burning. Impressive. Put this over top, prevent those sparks. It's kind of poppy wood, so putting that over top and stuff from having any issues. You get little sparks that go up, but not much. And I'm just gonna raise this off. Put this to the side. Pretty simple. Start throwing in larger chunks of wood and seeing what it does with larger pieces. It's kind of large, but there we go. Let's see what it does with one at a time. Color me impressed, you feel good? Obviously, it's about 24 degrees outside right now, probably even colder. But just that one log in the kindling is putting off a tremendous amount of heat. Yeah, this is great. And as you can see, the flame is just going straight up and there's no smoke. Like maybe a little bit of smoke, but not much. And it's being funneled straight up, which is great. If you have an RV like I do, the heat goes up. Spark arrestor prevents too many sparks going up in the air and hitting your awning. And then the heat hits the awning, comes back around, and keeps it really warm on the porch. This is great. Does it look like a picture? Yes. And then some. Definitely recommend getting this grate over top of it though. They sell them as a kit or they sell them uh, separately. So if you don't have this, I highly recommend getting it. Yeah, first burn. One thumb, two thumbs up. <laughs> Warm, babe? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, those vents are definitely starting to throw out some flame. Superheated air. That's cool. Now, is it worth $300? I don't know. I mean, high quality, perfectly made, works like a charm. No headache, no mess, no fuss, and good warranty. It's up to you. If you have the money, I definitely recommend it. There are other knockoff brands that do a pretty good job as well, so might do some shopping, but this is speaking volumes for what you're putting money into. Yeah, I can already start to feel the heat on the sides, but this is great. And like I said, with the griddle over top, you probably could cook on this, no problem, and definitely do hot dogs, no problem. Yeah, even when the logs start dying down, the smoke is next to nothing. It's just a nice calm heat being put off by it. And what it looks to be 
burning completely rather than having giant chunks left. So I'm gonna let this burn down and I'll show you the results. Yeah, the uh, all the debris underneath turned into just straight ash. And then the dustpan can be removed out. As you can see, you get some discoloration, but that's to be expected. And that log just kind of petered out because all the remaining coal just went away. But I can see this as a raising fire. It would burn itself down to just perfect ash, and then you can just dump the ash pan out. I like it.